My next guest takes on Steven Peterson at Legacy FC 61 coming up here on October 14th. Mark De La Rosa joins me here on the program for the very first time. Mark, how's it going? Good. Glad to be on. Hey, glad to have you here, man. I know we had uh, talked about doing this for a while. Glad it all worked out. And right off the bat, Mark, for, for those who might not be familiar with you and your backstory, how'd you get involved in combat sports? Uh, I've been boxing. I've been fighting since a really young age, constantly fighting in school. I have, I mean, I have uh, six brothers, two sisters, so it's a lot of boxing. You got a bunch of pro boxers in the family. So started out like that. And then my dad was really big in watching the first UFCs and stuff. Then I tried out a jiu-jitsu class when I was like 14. I'd been boxing previous to that, and then it stuck with me. I started mixing it all up, and I started loving it. My dad made me love it. Okay, gotcha. So aside from your dad, like, did you have any favorite fighters or anyone you really liked watching fight, whether it was boxing or wrestling or, or MMA? Uh, Hoist. I always liked Hoist. I always watched. My dad would always show me jiu-jitsu videos even before it got super big. I always followed Gracie Jiu-Jitsu and really wanted to do jiu-jitsu, but couldn't afford it at the time. Luckily, prices have gotten more down, gotten a lot more better. Excellent. Now, uh, I first became uh, familiar with you uh, with actually, uh, you're good friends with uh, Jose Shorty Torres, uh, Titan FC champ, correct? Yeah. How long have you guys been friends and how'd you guys meet? Uh, we met through uh, Lou, Lou Nutrition. Oh, with, great. Uh, Lou. Yeah, Lou, Lou yeah, Giordano, yeah. Yeah, he came down and helped uh, Hendrix and stuff, and he told me he had a guy that was about my size or close to my size that would be, thinks would be good, two good training partners. So um, I invited him out. He stayed with me uh, before he fought for the Titan FC title. And he did his, most of his training camp here. We did a lot of sparring. We trained for like about a month. We did a month, he did, did a, uh, a month camp out here before he went out to Jackson's. And we met like that. He's actually, he's back now. He's helped me with this training camp. Oh, is he? Oh, great. It's, it's funny. You know, I was talking about Shorty, who might be one of the nicest guys I've ever met. But then you just mentioned Lou, who might even be just as nice as him. I've interviewed Lou a bunch of times. So that, that's cool. You've got a chance to work with him. Um, when you started working with Lou, what was sort of one of the biggest mistakes you were making with your diet? Uh, one of the biggest mistakes was times I was eating, what I was eating, when to, I wasn't certain things you got to cut back, some things you got to add more. So Stuff like that, stuff when I wasn't I wasn't cutting stuff out in time or I was cutting it off too late and losing energy or not seeing the weight come off as fast. So little little minor details. Do you feel like Lou doesn't get enough respect in the industry? I mean, look at the work he's done with, you know, people like uh, Shorty and, and, you know, John Jones and everyone else. I feel like, you know, he's a guy that should really be sort of considered the number one guy because he's really helped a lot of people. He has, he has. I mean, the biggest, I was really uh, surprised with him whenever uh, – Anthony Pettis started work with him his last fight because I heard Anthony Pettis like the week off he was like 20 pounds over and he was working with Dolce then he called Lou and was like I need your help I gotta get these I gotta get these last 20 25 pounds off on a week notice and he got him to make 45 for the first time so that was pretty impressive excellent now is uh, fighting your full-time job or do you have uh, something else that kind of pays the bills and everything uh, that's my full-time job luckily I have great I have great sponsors so I'm able to do this full-time I mean I teach kids jiu-jitsu but I don't really count as a job but Okay, fair enough. That, that's good. Glad, glad to see you're all in. You know, you can't have any regrets that way, right? So I think that's awesome. Now, let's talk about your career here. I made the pro debut in 2014. You've gone 7-0 and with four finishes. Um, now you're finally going to be making your uh, legacy debut uh, in a bantamweight title fight. What's that, sorry? Oh, sorry. Yes, you're right. You're right. You're right. Your second uh, legacy FC fight. My, my apologies on that. Um, you know, how did you initially uh, start fighting for legacy? Uh, when did that deal sort of come together? Uh, it came back my third pro fight. I fought another undefeated fighter, uh, Keaton Gordon, and I took the fight. Uh, it was a 35-pound fight. It was like a, I took it like on a two-week notice or whatever. So like I was able to get my uh, foot in the door that way. And then kind of different promotions. And then they, I was supposed to fight for their 25-pound title coming up. But both of the got the, the main champ, the interim champ, are both on the show. So I, they weren't able to offer me that belt. And they said they needed to match up somebody with Peterson, and I was like, right here. I was like, I'm your guy. He's like, that sounds like a golden ticket to me. And, and if you had sort of perfect scenario, would you want to fight at flyweight? Is that sort of the plan? That, I, don't, I don't like cutting weight. 35, I still have to cut a little bit of weight, but the 35-pound cut is not hard. I'm able to eat the day of. And especially working with Lou and stuff, I'm able to eat the day of either way. I've been doing a couple of catch weights and stuff. I haven't made 125 yet just because I've been fighting at catch weights in 35. But – Again, I mean, cutting weight sucks. I don't care if you got to cut five, you got to cut ten. It doesn't matter. Cutting weight sucks, period. So, I mean, it just sucks. So, I feel super strong, super fast at 35. I feel good at 35. I mean, eventually, when I'm in the UFC, I will 
I'll, I'll I will go to 25. But right now on the local scene on these on these scenes down here, I feel really comfortable at 135. Uh, do you feel like the timing of this couldn't be better with you fighting for Legacy with the fact that they just had the merger? Uh, they're basically going to be the largest uh, with the Legacy Fighting Alliance. They're going to be the largest regional promotion basically in the world. Yeah, yeah. Again, it's good. A lot more publicity. It's going to help get our names a lot more out there. And it's going to help promote us. Well, let's talk about your opponent here, Steven Peterson. He's no slouch. Six straight wins, including his last fight, which uh, a lot of people were not picking him to win that one. Uh, he got the win over Manny Vasquez, who a lot of people thought was going to go to the UFC next. He kind of spoiled the party. How do you think you match up against him? I think I match up really, really well against him. I mean, whenever I watch a video on him, he does. He has the same habits. Super tough guy. I'm not taking anything from him. Super tough. He can take a punch. Pressure, constant pressure. Always coming forward, but... At the end of the night, I mean, he's flat-footed. He comes out, you don't see anything different about him. You just see, I just see a tough guy, a tough flat-footed guy. You know what I mean? As of me, you look at my video. My every fight, something different. I adapt to how they fight. Whether I find their weakness, whether it's wrestling, whether it's jiu-jitsu, whether it's boxing, whether it's kickboxing, I find their weakness and I, I take advantage of it. As of him, he's just a super tough guy. Got this flat-footed one-two, one-two overhand. Good jiu-jitsu, he's good everywhere. But I mean, I don't see any new tricks. He's he's a one-trick pony. I saw on your social media there, you're doing some training there with uh, Pat Curran and Amanda Bobby Cooper. Uh, who are some of the other people that are helping you get ready for this fight? Uh, Pat Curran. I went out to Team Alpha Male for a week. It was oh, super cool. great out there. I was I got a bunch of good training out there with Uriah, Master Tong, Danny Castillo, all those guys. Great team out there. Definitely, if anybody's in that area or wanted, thinking about training out there, Team Alpha Male is a great, great gym. A lot of bodies, 50 people on the mat, two to three hour long training sessions. But I, I had Pat Curran come out. Got Jose Shorty Torres, Amanda Bobby Cooper came out uh, from because my girlfriend's fighting on the card in Montana Stewart. She's fighting Mackenzie Dern. Okay, yeah, I was I was I was actually going to bring that up next, so I didn't I didn't realize she was your girlfriend. Uh, how, how's she looking in this fight? Because I actually just spoke to Mackenzie last night. Uh, she sounds pretty pumped up, but I mean Montana could steal her spotlight, right? Exactly. I mean, I think it's a it's a great fight for. Her. I mean, Mackenzie Dern. I mean, jujitsu and MMA two different. I mean, she's totally opposite. You, I mean, jujitsu, you're not getting punched in the face in a fight. You're actually going to get punched in the face, so. I mean, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a good fight. Uh, she has a lot of hype and stuff for jujitsu, but it's MMA. It's a it's a fight, so we'll see if she's able to get off her jujitsu. Uh, does that kind of motivate you more for for this uh, card with the fact that your your girlfriend's on there, or does it kind of uh, become a bit of a distraction? Because I know for some fighters it's good, some fighters it isn't. Uh, how do you sort of look at it? Oh, uh, this is our third time fighting on the same card, oh, so gotcha. I'm used to it. I'm used to it, and I got. Uh, Two other of my teammates fighting on the card, so used to it. We're always fighting on the same. We usually fight around the same time. Great. Just another day in the office, as they say. Yeah. Um, we talked about your weight cut, uh, obviously working with nutrition. Uh, what's one meal that Lou uh, makes for you or kind of gives you uh, the recipe for that you really love eating? Uh, there's not really a recipe. There's this, uh, a drink, this drink that we – every time uh, before or after a workout, I drink six ounces of pineapple juice with a scoop of chocolate protein. Oh God! It's like cotton candy. It's like it's sweet. It's good. Interesting. It's like one of the highlights of the day. Super I'll, good. I'll have to try that out. That sounds pretty good. Um, what's one thing you can't eat right now that you're missing that you you can't eat during training camp? Oh, everything. I can't eat pizza. <laughs> I can't eat donuts. I can't eat definitely pizza. I'm 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 a big pizza person, so I ain't having no pizza until after the fight. Now, I mentioned your impressive record there. If you get the win here, do you think that UFC is next? I mean, uh, like we said, we, you know, with the fact that you're with the Legacy Fighting Alliance, I mean, it's, you know, it just seems inevitable, inevitable at this point. Uh, I honestly believe I, I, need, I need to get this win. I honestly do believe I get this win. I will get that call up. I'm already on short notice, on short notice call for them. I'm already in contact with Sean Shelby. So, I mean, things are looking great from here. I just got to get the job done October 14th. Let's talk about that. October 14th, how do you see this fight ending? I see it ending either him getting frustrated with the TKO, a submission, or, I mean, I always, I always want the finish, but I got the cardio for a five-round fight, so for, a five, for five rounds, so I just see it finishing with my hand raised. Excellent. I, li- I like that answer. That was good. Um, last question for you here. We've talked all about you as the fighter and, you know, training and competing and all that. What do you like doing in your downtime when you're not uh, in the gym and, and you know, kind of, kind of you know, wanting to relax and take it easy and things like that? Uh, I'm in the gym all the time. I think it changes the way I eat, but besides fighting, I love to fish. I fish a lot. Oh, I great. actually do a lot, a lot of fishing. I just got into bow fishing. I caught a, like about two months ago, I caught a 140 pound 
alligator gar. It was like six foot eight. Big old alligator caught it with my bow on a fan boat thing, whatever. So that was pretty cool. You know what alligator gar is? You know what alligator gar is? I uh, I do not know. They got like the face of like an. That's a fish, but, like kind of like the snout of an alligator. It's like they're huge. It's huge. I got to send you a picture. It's huge. Yeah, you, you I definitely do. I need a visual here, man. But it it sounds pretty awesome. Um, I was gonna ask you though, are, do you have any fishing trips planned after this fight? Because I imagine that's something you're kind of looking forward to. Yeah, uh, after this fight, I'm going to Mexico. I'm gonna go to uh, Cosmo and uh, Cabo. So I'm going on a cruise. So I might get some fishing out there. Hopefully. Good stuff. Well, we're certainly looking forward to this fight. Legacy FC 61, October 14th, live on Access TV. Mark, thank you so much for joining me here on the program, man. Uh, where can people get a hold of you on social media? If you got any thank yous or shout outs, the floor is yours. All right. You can get a hold of me on uh, Facebook, Mark De La Rosa, Instagram, Mark De La Rosa, Twitter, Mark De La Rosa. Uh, big shout out to Doc's Mouthguard, Specimen Fight Gear, On It, The Throne. My manager, Orrin, with KO Reps, giving me all these sponsors, uh, Revagear, Genesis Jiu-Jitsu, Reyes Boxing, War Room, Stephen Wright, my girlfriend, Montana Stewart, and Nutrition. <laughs>